Charlie taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Sisters on the run try and use social media to help them flee their family in Saudi. Refugees face difficulty as the Libyan civil war renews. Flower power in Istanbul as the annual festival attracts the crowds. And this animal doing stuff was an unwilling participant in a viral campaign. And at the top of our news feed, two Saudi sisters and social media. Now, the two women are in Georgia and are hiding, trying to harness the power of the internet to escape their families. Take a look at this. from our family because the laws in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I want uh, asylum. It would have been better if they had confiscated her cell phone instead of her passport. Let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Now, people who are lucky enough to have a really expensive new Samsung phone are breaking them and then complaining about that fact on Twitter. The Samsung Fold has a protective screen which should not be removed, but some guy who works for Bloomberg removed it and then tweeted saying the phone was broke. Yeah, you don't say. A Chinese woman who cried on social media because the expensive new car she bought got an oil leak almost immediately has been offered a refund and a trip to Germany. The woman posted this video after buying a $98,000 Mercedes-Benz. The dealership in question would not help her, but after the video went viral, Mercedes suspended the dealer's license. No news yet as if on whether the woman has a new car. And Time Magazine's released their top 100 most influential people, and it's an interesting list of legends, including Mo Salah, the footballer, the journalist Gail King, the director Spike Lee, and actors Marshala Ali and Sandra Oh, and the Saudi actress Lujan Alful. Now, there is a growing crisis in Libya as that nation's civil war heats back up. Now, people who've been held there trying to flee to Europe for a better life are now increasingly at risk. Some in Europe perceive it as a growing threat of growing flows, but it represents first and foremost also a threat to the lives of those migrants and refugees that are trapped in Libya and whose life is more at risk than others. On previous experience in Libya, we're also concerned that uh, migrants may be used as human shields or forcefully recruited um, uh, to fight as well.
story of refugees now. And these refugees are in Canada, having fled the civil war in Syria. They escaped there, but then were befell, befallen by another tragedy, the loss of their daughter, called Amal. <laughs> cases are up 300% in the first three months of this year and there are a number of factors to blame, chief among them vaccine hesitancy. And that's been exacerbated by lies and misinformation being spread online, but some sites have taken some action. World Health Organization are fighting to make sure that people get vaccinated against curable disease, but they're losing. Now, as he said, there's been a huge uptick in measles cases and it could get worse in the years to come. Now, despite some of the measures we just showed you, lies and misinformation continue to spread online. So until social media companies effectively ban anti-vaccination content from their platforms, it's up to old media to remind people vaccines are safe and vital. We spoke to Katrina, Dr. Katrina Kletzinger, who's a medical officer with the WHO expanded program on immunization. So WHO has been very active in its communications around the global threat. And the response that WHO has had has been essentially twofold. On the one hand, we've really worked with all of our regions and with all of our member states to raise awareness and to provide tools to really deal directly with the providers and parents to make them understand the risks around vaccine preventable diseases and measles in particular. The other thing we're doing is we work really closely with partners in some of the countries which are at higher risk to do interventions for measles and for other vaccine preventable diseases. Um, raising awareness of the potential harms associated with measles, that even in um, industrialized countries, you know, one to two out of a thousand children with measles will die and the death rate is much higher in other countries and there's permanent disability um, that can result from measles infection and approximately a quarter of measles cases are hospitalized. I think that people aren't aware of this and they consider it a benign childhood illness. So we have a lot of work to do to raise awareness of the um, consequences of having vaccine preventable diseases, but I'm not sure we're going to go to uh, scaremongering tactics. Particularly in the developed world, people have forgotten what vaccine preventable diseases look like. And there's also at the same time an increase in the ability to spread rumors through social media. So that provides the media for being able to spread these rumors. Having said that, I do want to emphasize that while this is very concerning and we're working again with member states to really provide credible information to for providers and for parents, that the majority of uh, parents who choose not to vaccinate their kids or who, who have children who are not vaccinated is related to other issues such as ease of access, 
um, knowing when clinics are open, having the vaccines readily available to them. So we don't necessarily have a future uh, prediction of where the total number of measles cases is going, but what we do know is that we're likely to see ongoing outbreaks of this nature in communities where the inadequate percent of the population which is vaccinated. And we really re think that 95% of the population needs to be vaccinated or otherwise protected against measles in order to interrupt transmission of measles. And even in countries which have a really good vaccine program, like most of um, the Western Hemisphere, Europe, for example, even where there's pockets of the unimmunized, such as the situation that you mentioned in New York, measles is so incredibly infectious that it will find those pockets of unvaccinated individuals. Okay, let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. Now, Facebook say they've published one and a half million emails of their users by accident. It's just the latest error and privacy issue to come from the social network. They say they fixed it to, uh, and fixed the issue, which began after they asked users to enter their email password to verify their identity. Facebook say that those affected have been contacted. Now, these watches are being worn by street sweepers in China, and they have a cool stroke creepy feature. They will notify via audible alarm if the person wearing it has been sedentary for 20 minutes. The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo is now top of France's online bestseller list. It comes after a fire there destroyed part of the cathedral earlier this week. The Hunchback is a guy called Quasimodo who falls in love with a woman called Esmeralda. It was written in 1831. And this woman, Sol Paris, who made threats to shoot up a school in the city of Denver, Colorado, has been found dead. Reports say that she was obsessed with the shooting at Columbine High School, which happened on the 20th of April in 1999. A man who helped rescue some teenagers from a cave complex in Thailand has himself had to be rescued from a cave complex, but this one is in the US. Josh Bratchley was rescued from a cave in Tennessee. He was part of a team who rescued 12 footballers and their coach from a cave in Thailand last summer. Well, it's tulip season and that can only mean one thing, the Tulip Festival in Istanbul. And if you like flowers, you'll like this one. and in animals doing stuff, we have the story of a hoax horse from Canada. Now, pictures of this thing with its pink mane began circulating on social media, leading to professional people having to waste their time and effort to look for it, all encouraged by people on the internet who were either in on the hoax or just enjoy trolling people. So after animal rescue services scoured the island of St. Helene in Montreal for days, the hoaxers, some hilarious jokesters from a vlog called Vlog admitted what they'd done, saying it was all part of a viral internet experiment. Good one. And that will be all from the Newsbeat team. Reach out to me with your questions and comments and suggestions. I'm at Kamali Melbourne, and you'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again tomorrow.